Uh, how's so, Rosalie? How's your uh, what? What I, I'll speak. I'll speak for myself. I won't speak for Adam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you love this movie? I rated it four out of five stars on Letterbox. Okay. All right. So that's this is this. But is caveat: that doesn't mean I think it's flawless by any means. Rosalie, did you see Forces of Nature back in 1999? Ironically, no, I didn't watch it until a few months ago. Um, you may remember when I did a podcast earlier this year with Patrick about um, Never Been Kissed, I was also on a JLo viewing spiel. Okay. And so I watched a ton of rom-coms and I was just in the mood for rom-coms. I can't remember if I watched this before or after Geely, but I was like, oh, like maybe I'll watch, you know, more Ben Affleck rom-coms. There's not that many. Mm -hmm. And this was one of them. So I'm very new to the fold on this movie. Okay. And um, the fold might just be me because I know <laughs> that the backlash against it, both at the time and later, has been fairly um, resounding. I'm happy that we got to watch it because it's a movie that I've always, like, it's like I instantly forgot it, like when it came out. I don't know. I, I I was a senior in high school at the time, and I think it just was. Even though I liked Sandra Bullock and Ben Affleck separately, the pairing of them just never felt. It's like with Ryan Reynolds and Sandra Bullock in the proposal. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. know what it is, but with her, there's few actors I feel like make sense with her in a romantic comedy. Does that make sense? Really interesting. I never thought about it like that, that, that there is something with Sandra Bullock where her particular energy, who's a good. Hugh Grant. That's the best one Hugh I can think of. Yeah. I, yeah. I think her and him in two weeks notice work yeah. really well, but Maybe it's almost like she's such a, a comedian yeah. that she needs somebody that's kind of as known for being that as her. Yeah, and I'll, I'll, say, don't know. I'll yeah. say I'll say this as maybe the world's biggest Ben Affleck fan. She runs circles around Ben in this movie. I oh, mean, completely. she's, she's yeah. just she's like, meant to. Yeah. yeah. So I was trying to dig up any publicity or press I could find for this movie that yeah. was, you know, contemporary of when it came out mm. and didn't find much. Um, but there was an interview that she did where she talks about that she actually passed on the script initially mm. and that he was convinced to do it because Ben like had a meeting with her and was like, oh. I really want you to do this movie, okay. which I found interesting. Right. Um, neither of them seemed super enthusiastic about it as they were talking about it. Like it was those press junket things where you can tell they're just kind of going through the talking right. points. They've been asked but, a thousand questions all day long and they're just kind yeah, of- Yeah, but it was still interesting. And I think you really struck on something with like Sandra Bullock can only be paired with certain people because she's yeah. sort of the Cary Grant of this screwball comedy. Like she's not the typical female character, which I think might be one of the things I respond to about it. And I do think it's a little bit notable that it's directed by a woman, um, Bronwyn mm -hmm. Hughes. Yeah, who you know has gone on to do mostly TV work since then, but yeah. um, I and think Harry the Spy. You know, she brought out a different energy maybe than we would have seen in other things of that time. Yeah, and it's weird because like the I'm, I I just can't get out of my head like who she's been paired with in movies. Yeah, yeah. and it I can't yeah. make sense of it. Like, what is what? Why is she so compatible with Keanu Reeves or Matthew McConaughey or Hugh Grant or something like that? But then, like, she'll just run circles around, as Rob said, like Ben Affleck or Jason Patrick or mm -hmm. um, Ryan Reynolds to a certain extent. Extent in the proposal seems to be like really deferential to her, and he's yeah. kind of like decides to play it more straight than comedic at the time. Right. So it's, she really it's interesting. Does. I mean, she's such a movie star, and she's so um dynamic in a way that i think i i really think she elevates this part um i i'll just i'll just put it this way i didn't love this movie yeah. that's okay you're not alone i, I, I gave it one star i think <laughs> to, i think tonally it's very strange i think i think it's written and i think this is an interesting sort of um disconnect between script and director like it's got yeah. very strange tonal shifts 
um, the, 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 the version of it that's available on Amazon Prime, I don't know if this is just my version. I think Adam spoke to this as well when we were texting. Um, it looks like it, it's color timed like Saving Private Ryan. Like it's got this <laughs> real dark, like yeah. desaturated. And I don't know if that's just the digital, like the digital copy of it that's floating around online or not. Adam, I think you said yours was the same, right? I, I watched it on Stars HD and I remember seeing like promos for it because it came out on VHS when I worked at Blockbuster. Yeah. And like this looked like I was watching Minority Report on VHS underwater. It was like <laughs> wow. the weirdest thing. I, I've never seen a movie look this bad in HD. I read somewhere that they were trying to make planes trains and automobiles which i found really interesting as i was watching it with like a reality bites like it's got like a 90s angst to it as well in some it definitely has 90s angst i have a, a fan theory i again maybe the oh only fan. yes there we i can't imagine theories. anyone else having theories about this movie but i do and i'll ask so, ben and he'll tell you if you're right <laughs> yes okay so here's my theory and it is not in any way supported by the movie but i'm gonna put it out there as speculative anyway Okay. So my theory is none of the Sandra Bullock stuff really happens. My theory is that the very beginning of the movie, the bachelor party, Steve Zahn tells Ben Affleck, you can close your eyes when this naked woman is in the room. Um, and he closes his eyes and he has this vision of like what could be. Yeah. And that is how he gets to the ending that he gets. To. Interesting. That's a better movie. That's like that's Kirsten Dunst unofficially being an angel in Elizabethtown. Oh, that's like yes. some eyes wide shut shit. Like that's like a whole like this whole thing is in Tom Cruise's head. I like that. That's actually really yeah. interesting. And that Where makes were sense. you when they were doing the script polishes? Yes. <laughs> because of where the movie ends up too. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. Like the way that the movie, like I'm not to spoil it for anybody in case you decide you want to watch Forces of Nature, which, you know. I recommend. Rosalie yeah. recommends. <laughs> I uh, I recently got a, a book about the history of DreamWorks, specifically the beginning of the studio, mm -hmm. and I'm curious to dig into it to see if there's anything in there about forces of nature, because this was only like less than two years after they launched as a film uh, studio, so I'm curious. Because there are a lot of interesting decisions just in terms of like who's involved creatively. I mean, they get the cinematographer of like, you know, out of sight and the Outsiders, Elliot Davis, and then mm -hmm. they've got Mark Lawrence. I don't know if he'd done a ton of movies up to that point, but he ended yeah. up working with Sandra Bullock again because he did both Miss Congenialities, mm -hmm. Two Weeks Notice. Um, he did a Disney movie that maybe, Adam, you've seen because I know you like the weird Christmas movies <laughs> with Which Bill one? Hader and uh, Rob's girlfriend, Anna Kendrick. It's oh, called, he did oh, that uh, one. Noel. Noel. Noel, I remember Noel. I've seen that. Okay. Yeah, he. There you uh, go. So yeah, he's a good he's a good comedy director. Um, I really I think he's probably amongst my favorite of the Sandra Bullock collaborators. Um, because I do think that he really like knows how to let her shine in things like mm -hmm. Miss Congeniality and uh, Two Weeks Notice and stuff. And like you know he worked really well with um with Hugh Grant and they did music yeah. and lyrics after two weeks notice and everything like that. I wonder if Mark Lawrence like could have made this into a better movie in my opinion, like Maybe. than Bronwyn Hughes. I think like he might've gotten more to the heart of the comedy yeah. and less of the um, like the Enya Age of Innocence-ness of it all. Yeah. I appreciate that like her, her reach exceeded her grasp. I mean, yeah. like it's commendable for that, but I, I do think it is kind of like all you needed was a layup and you decided to take like a 17 foot jumper. I mean, I think there's some really great scenes that try to do so, so much and maybe yeah. they weren't necessary, but I still enjoy the experiments of them. So one would be the scene with the hailstorm where it's like the hail is falling in what looks like, like slow motion onto like, like the wheels and they're running yeah. and part of it's in slow motion, but they're not. And the music is very like 90s great beats. I love that scene, even though I don't know what it means. There's one thing I do like about the movie is um, one thing that was kind of a takeaway of mine while I was watching and I was texting this to Rob is it reminded me of how much I like Maura Tierney. And I just mm -hmm. think that she's so, she's like the Kevin Bacon of comedy where it's just like, she just goes in there and does the work and doesn't ask for attention and just always does a great job. And 
you don't you you can it's easy to take her for granted unless you're paying yeah. attention and i just think like she does so much to kind of give this movie kind of a humanity that like the rest of the movie doesn't have it's more like arch characterizations for these yeah, people or thing. like archetypes and things like that but she feels like a real person and i think that like her and affleck's sort of you know just lovey doveyness is really endearing and i'm happy that like spoilers for forces of nature i'm glad that they didn't break up at the end of this um because that's where the movie would lead you to believe this was typically going. go yeah because a worse movie by comparison um serendipity with mm -hmm. cusack and kate beckinsale right cusack is uh dating bridget moynihan he's about to marry her and she's like in the movie like portrayed as being like this wonderful supporting woman yeah. and uh, uh, the type of woman uh, anybody would be lucky to have as a partner and then like she off screen gets dumped yeah. because the movie doesn't even have the courage to face her and he ends up with manic pixie dream girl kate beckinsale because they're both awful people and they kind of <laughs> deserve to be together i guess yeah i enjoyed that the movie confronts all those like tropes about marriage but yes. you can tell that the movie's point of view is not shared by those people it's one of those things where yeah. like you see the writer and they had an idea and maybe the movie got lost in the shuffle like in development like it's like oh no we're going to develop this as a sandra bullock comedy or this is going to be a vehicle for affleck and it's like you see the writer being like well no but like my original idea was kind of this and then the director has a take and the director's take is like maybe kind of antithetical to the script and it's kind of like a weird ends up being this weird tonal mix and affleck i'll just say i don't think affleck's great in this movie i think he, he feels a little lost he's still this is early on where he's still working out his movie star persona um he's trying but he's not he's not like again not quite there yet i mean the idea that you could just put steve zahn in a movie i miss that i remember remember when a movie would just come with a side of zahn like it would just come with yeah. a side of steve zahn you know you <laughs> just get a story. Yeah. yeah yeah remember when a movie could just make up jobs like blurb writer for books I'm a, I'm a, I'm sure. yeah, jacket, jacket was he a jacket writer or something like that? Jacket yes. copy, yeah. he he copy yeah. he's a jacket copywriter but she yeah him today an algorithm does yeah. that job. i think this made so much sense at the time especially because dreamworks was a new okay. studio where it's just like how do we what, what do we do for our spring release it's like two really popular stars in a romantic comedy boom how hard can it be and bronwyn hughes yeah. is just like i got ideas <laughs> yeah <laughs> everything about yes. this movie makes sense yeah i don't think it was particularly well executed but but interesting yeah. um i just have to give a shout out to that guy that sang the phil collins song to maura tierney like <laughs> not, not even particularly well and basically yeah. her reaction is like an eye roll um that took guts so i was i was singing along with them as i was watching the movie. i was too i you was started too i kind of yeah okay i have one more fan theory do we have time for another fan theory? of course please okay so this is gonna take a second but basically ben affleck writes copy for book jackets mm -hmm. andrew bullock makes fun of him in this movie but then she remembers a particular book that he wrote the copy for, which is about an architect, archeologist, I think, that falls in love in the pyramids. And it's a scintillating tale of erotic mummification. And then I was wondering if this is a sneaky prequel for The Lost City, in which Sandra Bullock's character is sort of with an archeologist who died. And then she's writing books about it that take place in like these, weird locations thoughts i mean the parallels make sense it's Absolutely. almost like the lost city's like a kind of riffing as like or like doing like a practical joke on forces of nature a little bit maybe yeah, yeah kind of. all right cool. well thank you to rosalie for joining thank us you so much the rosalie. final entry Thanks of that month yeah uh a, a much a much more fun discussion than movie viewing <laughs> for me but as adam said it works out that way sometimes yeah thank you so much for joining us thank you to ben Thank you, Mr. Affleck. Providing us with a month of material. Thank you, yeah. Adam. Thank you, Rosalie. Thank you, Rosalie. Adam? What are we yeah, doing? so next time we will be back with um, our now annual uh, Lump of Coal mm -hmm. episode. 
where Rob and I will pick a not so much loved movie from 2022 to uh, champion Stand in up. a way or defend or just kind of begrudgingly recommend or Celebrity. say like, hey, I thought this was better than its reputation. Rosalie, thank you for joining us. Until next time. I don't know why these I seats are reserved. <laughs> I didn't have the thing. <laughs> <laughs>